Well, it was pretty scary, that's for sure. And uh, the worst part was being on your own. If you had been with someone else, it would have made a difference. If you could have turned the branch on, it would have made a difference. The smoke just made everything uh, that black that you couldn't see hand in front of you. The noise, you didn't know what the noise was. You could hear people, but you didn't know where they were, you had no idea. Time went past, I don't know how long, but I was starting to worry a bit because I knew I didn't have much hair. Once the oxygen went, there's not a thing you do about it. I just don't know what would have happened if I hadn't have uh, heard those other people. Uh, when I got out, I had about 12 minutes of air left out of a two hour breathing apparatus, so uh, it wasn't a very good uh, supply left. Ship fires, like basement fires, uh, can be some of the most dangerous fires. Fair size ship fire, the bloody everything's red hot, the metal and everything, and not a good thing to go to. There's no mucking around with ship fires. If they go wrong, then everybody's in a lot of trouble. Brisbane Brigade or the Metro, Old Metropolitan had quite a few uh, ship fires in its days. Brisbane was uh, well respected as uh, a firefighting force that could put out ship fires. So all they did on board was to batten down the hatches and head for the nearest port, which happened to be Brisbane. At uh, the Elm Bank, there was a berth at the Hamilton, the wharves, who would fire in the early hours of the morning. Crews were dispatched and uh, the chief decided to flood the holes with CO2 to control the fire until he got uh, the day shift down there to attack the fire properly. I think he got about eight or 10 of us to go down in pairs. We donned protos, climbed down the ladder with about 25 feet down into the hole, and uh, most of us started to unload the uh, blocks of rubber. When we got out, I noticed one of the people we went down with, Simon Stephen, wasn't there. And uh, when I told the senior officer, he told me to go back and get him. And he said, you'll only be down there for five minutes. Just grab any set, you'll be right. So I picked up another VA set that someone had discarded and went back into the hole to uh, get this fireman to come out. When I found Fireman Stevens, he was working with one of the new branches. We had a galena, and due to the dirt in the water, the branch wouldn't lock off. So the officer told me to take the branch off Fireman Stevens. And he said, you won't be here long, just do it. So I climbed up on the baler wall and took over the branch. By this time, the hole was getting full of black smoke. Within five minutes, visibility was nil. Because I was only going down to bring somebody out, and should have only taken three or four minutes, I had no idea how much uh, time I had left in the set. And this set here, it's a proto self-contained breathing apparatus. The set passes two litres of oxygen a minute, which is how much a man working hard needs to keep going. The Proto Mark V, and this was an oxygen um, breathing apparatus set. It was a regenerating set, which meant that the oxygen cylinder uh, trickle fed oxygen through to the wearer. Usually at ship fires and, and areas like that where you had to go down in a a hole or you had to work down there or the proto was the one that they used. There was two tubes and a mouthpiece. You had a horrible thing that used to go in your mouth like an aqualung. Put these two tabs here with your teeth. The mouthpiece actually had two hooks and that hooked up to a head harness that came down and held up the hooks. And, and a nose clip. And a set of uh, rubber goggles. They were, they were really antiquated. And I've got a photograph in the book in there of the coal miners in the north of England wearing exactly the same protos in 1935. So work it out for yourself. It had a rubber, uh, Indian rubber bag that uh, contained what they call protozoal. And the air goes through this material and it comes back, comes back out into your lungs again. Every now and then you would have to massage those chemicals because the air would make little channels through the chemicals and you would start to get stale breath. It went through a cooler, which they called a cooler, but you, mm. after about half an hour's wear, you couldn't even put your hand on it, it was too hot. Uh, you were breathing hot air back anyway. After 10, 12 minutes, this bag that holds 12 litres will start to fill up. You press the bag, press the, uh, the uh, relief valve and discharge some of the oxygen to the atmosphere. 
and keep in mind that they could not communicate with themselves. No, no communication whatsoever. If you took it out of your mouth to call out, then you got smoke inhalation. Pretty uncomfortable stuff. It wasn't the, wasn't the most pleasant piece of uh, apparatus to wear. And they must have weighed what? Well, they're pretty heavy. Yeah. At that stage, I was just that happy to have one on, and uh, I wouldn't have cared how much it weighed if I knew it had more oxygen in it. Even though other people in the hole we were partitioned off by bales of wool, and no one had any idea at that stage where anybody was. If it had to, had been an ordinary branch, you could have shut that off. That branch, it would have had uh, about 80 pound pressure going through it all the time. You're flat out holding it with one hand, so you virtually got to keep both hands on it all the time. So I couldn't just leave the hose where it was, because it would have started flying around the ship, and uh, not just myself, but everyone else would have been in danger. I heard some people in the vicinity three, four metres away. So uh, I removed my mouthpiece from my set and called out to them. And they come over and took over the uh, branch from me. And I went topside. Just, uh, it was mainly by feel working around the ship, around the cargo, until I found a bulkhead and I followed that. And then the ladder was on the bulkhead. And there was only, I think there was only the second ship fire we had to my knowledge. And uh, it was uh, a real learning curve for everybody.